Welcome to another episode of Elevated Minis. In this episode, we're gonna make what I think is a pretty cool sewer base. What's up everyone? My name is Cody and I'm glad that you've taken a little time out of your day to watch this tutorial. My hope with every video is that you'll learn something new, pick up a technique or two, and apply it to your own miniatures and then make it even better. But if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you never miss an upload. I try to get one or two videos done every month depending on life and family obligations. But if the channel can grow, I'll be able to work on getting videos out more regularly to you guys. So this sewer base can be used on any number of your tabletop games, but if you head over to my Instagram or Facebook page, you'll get a little preview of what my next video will be, as well as the miniature I use this base for. With all that out of the way, let's get started. So I had to remove the miniature from the base before this step, which I did off camera because it was a little bit tricky to record. But uh, once I did that, I started out by super gluing a piece of cork down, making sure to leave the flat edge facing out. You'll want to cover about two thirds of the base, leaving enough room to be able to pin the miniature on later, but also enough space so you can do the sewer and water effect as well. But uh, once happy with that, I cut around the cork by following the edge of the base with the hobby knife. I took a plastic straw that I had from the cupboard and cut it to a length I was happy with and marked out where I wanted it to be on the base. I then cut out just enough of the cork where I could super glue it in place, but uh, looking back at it I should have either cut the pipe a little bit longer or cut into the cork a little bit shallower so some of it could have been sticking out where I could have done some rust effects. But that's okay, you can make it better with your own base. I then mixed up some green stuff, which is a two-part epoxy putty that uses equal parts of a resin putty and a hardener putty that turns green when you mix them together and then cures into a super hard material. Make sure you use a little bit of water on your fingers because this stuff can get pretty sticky. I flattened the green stuff a bit with my fingers before laying it down on top of the cork and straw and uh, then used a little bit of water and my hobby knife handle to roll it out nice and flat uh, by also keeping it thick enough to sculpt into it a little bit. For this next bit, you could use a flagstone or cobblestone green stuff roller if you don't want to bother sculpting them, but they're just stones so they don't need to be perfect. Uh, but uh, I marked out some lines with the hobby knife and used a sculpting tool to separate the stones and round out their edges just a little bit. I then textured the stone a little bit using the sculpting tool just by like kind of stippling it on there. You could also use like a rolled up piece of tin foil if you want. To hide and unify where the green stuff met the cork as well as the gap by the straw, I used sterling mud and spread it all around the edges of the base. After letting the green stuff harden overnight, I then took a pin vise and drilled a couple of holes into the base where I knew I wanted the miniature to go later on. 
Since this base is for a Black Plague zombie side survivor, I wanted it to look like he had just chopped off the head of a zombie that rolled into the sewer below. So I cut off the head of a zombie from the first season of Zombie Side and super glued it down onto the base. <laughs> the family and I never played anymore, so the sacrifice was made. Obviously, you could omit the head altogether from this base, but I thought it added something. You could also make the head a little more sunken into the sewage below by taking a sanding file and sanding down one side of the head so it lays nice and flat. With all the details in place, it was time to prime up the base. Um, I did a Zenithal prime for this, but you could totally just prime it in black and call it good. But I had the airbrush out for priming the miniature that this base is for and figured why not do it here as well. Um, I'll go into a little more detail about Zenithal priming in my next video, but in the meantime, you can just prime it in the black. And on to the painting. I used Steel Legion Drab on the area underneath all the stonework. It's really the perfect color for anything you want to be uh, dirty or muddy. I followed that by using Gorthor Brown on the zombie's hair, which was probably a little bit of a mistake because it's too similar to the ground, but that's okay. Pick your favorite zombie hair color. I then laid down a base coat of all the stones in Rakharth flesh and then colored in a few of the other stones with Karak stone and Ushapti bone for a little variation in tones. Uh, just be random about which stones you decide to paint a different color and try not to make a pattern out of them. One area that did benefit from the Xenothal Prime is the uh, cut off zombie head. It made it quick and easy by using uh, Plague Bearer Flesh, which is a contrast paint. It picked out all the details and j left just enough uh, contrast that I didn't need to spend a lot of time on it since it's not really the focal point of the piece. I then used an Agrax Earthshade wash over the entire piece to get into all the cracks and recesses of the model. After letting that dry for a good 20 minutes or so, I used a dry brush of Ushab T-Bone, followed by another dry brush of Pallid Witch Flesh to pop out all the details, and uh, I did this over the entire piece. Onto the sewage detail, I picked out three greens to use. I decided on Wa Flesh to base everything out, Death Guard Green as my mid-tone, and then Elysian Green for my brightest green along the edges of the sewer, as well as around the head. Um, I was just blending colors while they were still wet on the, on the surface until I was happy with the look. There's no real rhyme or reason to this, just playing with the color.
And these next steps, uh, I'm just using a bunch of different washes and I started with Coelia Green Shade where I wanted the sewage to be a little bit darker and to smooth out some of the blending underneath. And then used Biltan Green along the edges to kind of simulate some splashes of sewage along the bottom wall. For the water effect, I had never tried a UV resin before and I've been wanting to, so this was the perfect place to give it a shot. I can't remember the brand I used here, but I know Green Stuff World sells this and you can also find it on Amazon under various brands and it's not super expensive. Uh, the reason I went with UV resin instead of the resin I've been using in my other videos is because this, this stuff is really thick and I knew I would be able to control it easier and prevent it from running over the edges of the base. Um, I used a toothpick to push the stuff around a bit until I was happy and then used the UV light to cure it and it was hardened within 10 seconds. I wanted to dirty up the stones a bit more so I used some Vallejo pigments. Um, they've got a lot of different earthy colors to choose from but I went with yellow, brown, and gray pigments and set them into place by using some airbrush thinner. Um, I don't have the name for the pigments anymore since I've had them forever and the names have worn off the bottle. I then took some Athonian camo shade and just dabbed it around in a few places on the base just for a bit more griminess. And this wouldn't be a zombie side model without some blood effects, so I took some Vallejo model color whole red and splashed it around the base. It really is a great color for dried blood. But uh, after that I went in with Blood for the Blood God for some fresh blood color and shininess and dabbled that a bit near the areas of dry blood just for a bit more dimension. And probably one of my favorite parts of the base is where I put the blood by the neck of the zombie head. Um, I used a little bit of water on my brush and feathered the edges a bit and it really made it look like the blood was beginning to disperse in the sewage. It's a little thing, but I thought it turned out pretty cool. I then use Rhinox Hide for the rim of the base to clean up the edges. Always clean up the edges of your bases. It's one thing that can drive me a little crazy on miniatures that I see, especially if you put any amount of time or effort into a base. It only takes 10 seconds and can really clean up the look. So after showing the base to my wife, she pointed out to me that the zombie head wasn't very noticeable and it looked kind of like a rock. <laughs> but uh, that's probably true. So I started by using uh, Seraphim Sepia to change the tone of the hair a bit and then tried to highlight its face a bit more with a little iron rack skin. Uh, I did the cheekbones, a bit by the jawline and the nose. It probably didn't make that much of a difference, but that's okay. The base shouldn't outshine, outshine the miniature standing on it anyway. And to finish off the base, I used a little more of Blood for the Blood God around its mouth. So what do you guys think? Would this be something you would make for your miniatures? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, but if you haven't checked out my Instagram already, make sure you do so to see the miniature I use for the space as well as get a peek at what I'm painting next for you guys. Also, be sure to check my Facebook page where I'll try to post updates of what I'm working on so you know what's coming. But until next time guys, thanks again.